Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? What you decree is what you eat. What you speak is what you eat, man. Glory to God. You know, there is a spiritual law. It says, those who sow in the flesh reap corruption. Those who sow in the spirit reap everlasting life. Those sowing mean you get seed. What you plant is what grows. What grows is what you eat. Are you ready for that? Glory to the Lamb. Good. Then we're going to talk about personal gardens tonight. Matthew 13. I ain't got a garden. Oh, but you do. <laughs> What's in your garden? I can tell you BC what I used to grow. <laughs> but hallelujah. And it didn't make me wise. Matthew 13. Thank you, Master. Ugh. Matthew 13, verse 18. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> Training session. Not religious session. Amen? Amen. We we're being trained up to infiltrate and kick some butt in, kings in, in Satan's kingdom. Rescue some souls. Train them up so they can kick butt. Amen? In verse eight, uh, 18, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received what? Seed. seed. Everyone say seed. seed. By the wayside. In other words, this person was really not interested. This was a hardened heart. So he rejected it. But he received the seed on stony places. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution or temptation arises because of the word Immediately, he or she stumbles. In other words, they're misled. Again, this is the place where he says stony ground. Did you ever try and plant something in the stony ground? It's not easy, is it? In fact, what prevents, what happens in stony ground is water. It makes it difficult for water to get to it. Verse 22. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the cares of this world... And the deceitfulness of riches choked the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But he who received seed on good ground, which is good soil, is he who hears the word of God, which is the seed, and understands it. In other words, he can interpret. He, can, he understands it. Who indeed bears fruit and produces some fruit. A hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty fruit. Let's go a little further. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. In other words, in his garden. But while men sleep, his enemy came and sowed tares or weeds, corruptible seeds, among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced the crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your garden? Hmm. Of course, he was like, what do you mean? <laughs> How then does it have what? Tares. He said to them, an enemy has done this. In other words, an enemy has influenced someone 
to plant corruptible seed. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them out? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But then gather the wheat into my barn. Again, the field is associated with soil. It's us. The seed is the word of God. In other words, God provides seed for me and you. The word says man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, because God's word is seed. Amen? And in this, every word. So depending on what kind of soil it's going in, depends on how it's going to grow. We are the gardeners, four types of soils. We just mentioned it. J Jesus used this illustration from the Garden of Eden. By planting his personal seed. His seed was Adam. If you really begin to look at the earth, it's nothing but a garden. And God planted his own image and likeness as a seed on the planet so it would multiply and become fruitful. And at one time, a harvest would come and he would take his seed, his offspring, off of this planet that they would be with him to reign another new creation. Is everybody okay? The problem with this is the soil got contaminated by corruptible seed. And it couldn't bear the right fruit. Of course, God threw everybody out of the garden, right? Everybody out of the pool. And then he put a fire or flame of protection around so they could not get back to the tree of life until the true tree of life came and manifested to break everything off so that people could begin to eat again from the true seed of life. Amen? And Matthew 12. Just step back one moment there. Turn one page back. Matthew 12 and verse 30 something. I think it's 33. Is everybody there? You know, when people so get, they keep looking at the area of, there's, first of all, the word of God is three dimensional, past, present, and future. And it goes in deeper levels. And the closer you get to the Lord, the more understanding you get, the more you'll be able to interpret. Because even the Word of God is a set time and place and position. And depending on where you are and, and what's happening in your life at that time, God will speak to you from either something pertaining to the future, to bring it to the present. Amen? So that you can take care of it. Or even sometimes He'll bring something from your past to the present to take care of it. Now, God does not bring condemnation or guilt or shame. The enemy does. Amen? That's not God. Jesus came to bring life and life abundantly. He never came to steal, kill, and destroy. People keep blaming my dad for all of their stupid stuff. And when they bring it on themselves, and they blame other people for their own stupid stuff they bring on themselves. The problem is, is they're eating out of their own garden. Hello? Everybody eats out of his own garden. Whatever you're planting in your garden, you're going to eat. Hello? Praise God. All right, let's grow for it. Verse 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good. How does the tree come? It has to have a seed, right? Okay. Or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its what? Fruit, and I want you to know there's no granolas in the garden. Nutty and fruity, amen? Verse 34. Bro of vipers, how can you be in evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. So he's talking about two people. He's talking about the new creation and the old. But I say to you that every idle word men may speak, they will give account in the day of judgment. So your words do not fall to the ground. They go in the garden. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Does everybody see this? James 3. It's in your garden. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus uses the illustration of seed and garden and soil all over the Bible. James chapter 3. The word says something very powerful. It says, feed on his faithfulness. His promises are his seeds. So what is planted in your garden, you will eat from. Your garden is associated with your soul, your heart. So whatever is planted in you, you eat from. Because even when you speak the word, what you speak is what you what? Eat. But in reality, what you speak is what you plant. Then you eat from it. And if it's bad, it will produce bad fruit. James 3. Is everybody there? In verse 1. My brother, let not, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look at also the ships. Although they are large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among your, our members that it defiles the whole body. Wow. The whole body. And sets on fire the course of nature. And it sets on, it's set on fire by what? Hell. For every kind of beast and bird or reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth pursued blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt and fresh water. Hmm. Then he goes on and he goes, who's wise and understanding among you? Let him show by what? Good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Why? Because we eat from our own garden. And what we're eating will produce a character of Christ. Because see, if we're still allowing the old man to part, plant corruptible seed in us, and we begin to eat from that corruptible seed. And then it just sows more corruptible seed. Some people can never outrun their corruption. They will never outrun it until they die. Until that tongue is turned. Until they start realizing what they're speaking is what they're eating and what they're planting. 
that's a terrible place to be. It's torment, fear. It's discouragement. It's disappointing. It seems like you can never get ahead. Nothing works right. Is everybody okay? Remember, the word says that there's life and death in the power of our tongue. Why? Because it's producing righteous seed or corruptible seed. And the enemy knows how to influence us. Amen? He will influence you. He'll torment you. He'll push you. He'll do everything he can to get you so frustrated that you release a corruptible seed to plant. And then it grows and bears fruit. And next thing you're eating from that tree and not even realizing it. Is everybody okay? John 15. Hallelujah. See, if you don't have control over your tongue, someone does. John 15, starting at verse 1. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I am the what? True vine. My father's a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word. The word is called a seed, isn't it? Which I have spoken to you because Good seed has been planted. It's called righteous seed. And so righteous seed will always produce righteous fruit. You'll know them by their fruit. Amen? He says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, so there must be a, an abiding in that area. In other words, there's got to be a connection so that the river of life can constantly flow and water good seed. And so that you recognize the corruptible seed to destroy it. Get rid of it. You know, the word talks about God creating Adam to till the ground. I mean, come on, let's be real. He didn't need a farmer. Hello? He was looking for someone to rule the ground he created. Amen? Hallelujah. In verse 5. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are what? Burned. If you abide in me and my words or my seeds abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much righteous fruit. So you will be my what? My disciples. Wow. These are known as seeds of righteousness. See, there's a difference. There's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and there's the tree of life. And only the tree of life produces righteousness. Everything, that's where people go, oh, I'm a good person. Good people don't go to heaven. Righteous ones do. There's an entrance thing in front of the throne. It says justice and righteousness is the entrance. Not good. In James 3. James 3.13. Everybody okay? Personal garden. What's in your garden? James 3.13, let's speak it together. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by what? 
good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. In other words, his works is his conduct. <clears throat> but if you have what? Bitter envy. Is bitter envy a righteous seed or corruptible? Corruptible. And self-seeking in your garden. Hello. Do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. It is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Everyone say pure. pure. Then what? Peaceable. Peaceable. Gentle. Willing to yield. Full of mercy. Good fruits. Without partiality. Without hypocrisy. Amen. Why? Because there's production of good righteous seed that produces righteous fruit. Amen. Look at the next verse. Now the fruit of righteousness is what? sown or planted in peace by those who what? Make peace. So you got to be a peacemaker. If you're a peacemaker, hello, then you're eating out of the right fruit of the garden. But if you're one that promotes division, gossip, slander, backbiting, a busybody, you're eating the wrong fruit. Amen? Go to Matthew 5. Matthew 5 and verse 3. These are called the be attitudes. Amen. It's like be a good attitude. Amen. You want an attitude of Christ? Here it is. Amen. In other words, Jesus is exposing these attitudes because they are righteous seeds that are planted in the garden. In verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. That means humble, not prideful. For theirs is the kingdom of what? Heaven. Verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be what? Com now, they're not mourning because of anything that's in the area of bad. They're mourning because of the corruption of mankind. They're mourning because of the lost Verse 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the what? The earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what? Righteousness, for they shall be filled. This is why some people are not getting filled. Because they're really not thirsty and hungry for righteousness. In fact, they're not even seeking righteousness. They're just seeking the hand of God and not the face and heart of God. What can you give me? Verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? Attain. This is why some people don't get mercy. And they wonder why nothing's going right. Amen. See, mercy is the area where God considers you. When we yelled out, mercy, have mercy upon me, what we're saying, consider me. And then he goes, okay. And then he releases grace, which is his plan of escape. But if you ain't got a plan of escape, it's because he's not... Release his mercy. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Blessed are the what? Pure in heart, for they shall what? They'll see God. And blessed are the what, we, which we were just talking about, peacemakers. For they shall be called sons and daughters of God. Blessed are those who, per, who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. <clears throat> for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. So they persecuted the prophets who were before you. In other words, you don't need to retaliate and prove yourself. Amen? Don't defend yourself. So what? We're supposed to be dead to self. Dead people don't react. 
I've never seen a dead person grumble or complain. We're to be called peacemakers. Amen? Amen. You'll know what's in your garden. Amen. First Peter 1. Everybody has a garden. It all started in the garden. Oh, happy days. First Peter chapter 1, verse 22. So when you see the word truth, it's the word of God, which is the seed. When you see righteousness, it's associated with a fruit that's coming from a righteous seed. The word says, he who practices righteousness. And those who are there who practice righteousness, those who don't practice righteousness. It's because what you're eating out of your garden. Verse 22, since you have what? Purified your souls, your garden, you've got good soil. In obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a what? A pure heart, uncontaminated soil. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, hello, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever in you. Because all flesh is grass and all the glory of man is a flower of the grass, and the grass withers and the flower falls away. But the word of God, the seed of God, endures forever and ever and ever. You and I are purified. It's purified soil by obeying the, God, the seed, the word of the truth, sowing righteousness with love out of a pure heart. You've got to always ask yourself, what's growing in your garden? You'll know by your own character, whether you are a responder or reactor, some nuclear reactors. First Corinthians 13. Those seeds got radiation. How about fear and anxiousness and anxiety? Oh, snap. Ever get around someone that just can't shut up? It's from the Tower of Babel. First oh <laughs> Corinthians thirteen. Hallelujah. It's a Nephilim seed. <laughs> Verse 4. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love. L-O-V-E, not L-U-S-T. <laughs> Love suffers long. Hallelujah. That means you put up with a lot of crap. Amen. Without reacting. <laughs> Love suffers long and is what? Kind. Love does not envy what's in your garden. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. <laughs> does not behave rudely. Mm -hmm. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. But well, that counts every one of us out. We all think evil occasionally. I'm going to kill that person, you know. But thank God I'm a born-again Christian. I love them now. So I'm just going to call coals on them. Lord, I forgive them and bless them. I'm going to do it the righteous way. Get him, Jesus. 
Verse 6. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. <laughs> Bears all things. That's what you put up with. Amen. Believes all things. Now, it doesn't mean that you believe, you know, lies. You believe in the goodness of people. You know, you, they have to prove themselves to be idiots. Amen? But we expect the goodness out of everyone until they blow it. Hallelujah. Bears all things, hopes all things, and endures. You're, you're an endurer. That means you can, patience, you endure. I hear people, don't pray for patience. Well, you're going to get it worse then. Go ahead, don't pray for patience. God knows, because patience is endurance. Look at, you must love suffering. Why? Because it says that you'll be perfected through it. It says that you'll be settled through it. Amen? So suffering is nothing but trials and tribulations that you're burning through so you can change. It's like washing your animal. They hate being washed, don't they? But you got to still wash it. And then they feel better afterwards and they, you know, they run around the house and go, now give me something. And they smell much better, and you pet them more. <laughs> Praise God. Thank God we're not animals. <laughs> so he's going to treat us even better. But we still go through the human wash. It's like going through a car wash, too. It's automatic. And it says in verse 8, love never what? It doesn't fail. So if you're walk, walking in God's perfect love, you're removing all fear. Amen. Amen? God's perfect love is everything for me and you. It tells us all about it right here. Oh, hallelujah. Out of the garden, there's peace, joy, and righteousness. Those are fruits. Not division, not gossip, not slander, not backbiting, not unforgiveness, not selfishness, and not pride. Psalm 101. What's in your garden? Remember, you eat out of your own garden. That's where the word says you drink out of your own cistern. Psalm 101. Oh, happy days. Verse 4, Psalm 101, verse 4. And I actually, let's start with verse 3. Is everybody there? Amen. I will set nothing wicked before my what? My eyes. Why? Because it's going to plant corruptible seed. And then you're going to eat what it grows. Oh, yes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall depart from me. I will not know wickedness. Whoever secretly slands his neighbor, him I will destroy. The one who has a haughty look and proud heart, him I will not endure. My eyes shall be on the what? Faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He who walks in a perfect way, he shall what? Serve me. Who walks in a perfect way shall serve him. Wow. He who works the seed shall not dwell within my house. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Early I will destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. Secretly slanders, walks up with a perfect heart, will serve him. Depending what's in your garden, what you're eating from, will produce a hardened heart, contaminated heart, or righteous fruit. Proverbs 16. Verse 
Proverbs 16, verse 27. Although I'd like to go to 17 first. Verse 17. Proverbs 16, verse 17. Is everybody there? The highway of the upright is to what? Depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his garden. Hello. Pride goes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be humble, spirit with lowly, than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely will find good, and whoever trusts in the Lord, happy is he. Now I'll go to verse 27. An ungodly man digs up evil, and it is on his lips like a burning fire. A perverse man sows strife, and a whisper separates the best of friends. A violent man entices his neighbor and leads him in a way that is not good. He winks his eye to devise perverse things. He purses uh, purses his lips and brings what? About evil. Hmm? We must be careful on the things that come out of our mouth. Amen. First John chapter three. First John chapter three. And verse four. Everybody there? Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he who was, he was manifested to take away our sins, in him there is no sin. So if you're abiding in him, sin will not have dominion over you. Whoever abides in him does not sin. See, I told you. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor what? Known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin for his what? His seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In other words, his seeds remain in him. Understand that. Plural. Why? Because you are planting seed out of your own mouth. So you have a garden that there's good, good seed, righteous seed, and corruptible seed. And you must be careful what's growing out of your own garden and what you're harvesting and what you're eating. Amen? Amen. Romans 16. We have a bedtime prayer in our prayer booklet that talks about corruptible seeds, cursing them and commanding them to wither and die. The problem is people keep watering them so much they spread like crazy. Romans 16, verse 17. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Now I urge you, brother, note those who cause divisions. If a person is causing division, he obviously is not eating out of a righteous seed. Amen. That causes divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. For those are, who are such do not serve the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly or themselves. And by smooth words... Flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. Their smooth words are planting corruptible seeds in other individuals to promote them. 
to do corruptible things. Bad fruit. That's why the word says, bad company corrupts good habits. Amen? So you got to be careful who you associate with. I don't care if they call themselves a Christians or not. You look at the fruit of it. What's coming out of their mouth? Are they peacemakers, promoters of love? If they're not, certainly don't take counsel from them. It's amazing how many people call counsel from people that they know are backslidden. Verse 19. For your obedience has become known to all, therefore I am glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Amen. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 12. Verse 19. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 19. Is everybody there? Again, do you think we excuse ourselves to you before God and Christ, but we do all things, beloved, for your edification? For I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I wish, and that I shall be found by you such as you do not wish. Lest there be contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, backbitings, whisperings, conceits, tumults. Lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and I shall mourn for many who have sinned before and have not repented of the uncleanness, fornication, and lewdness which they have practiced. In other words, here is the word where it's repentance means turn away. Somebody may have said, I repent, but not turn away from it. Well, that's not true repentance, then. That's corruptible seeds in the garden producing unrighteous fruit. In Psalm 119, there must be true repentance. Psalm 119. In verse 1. Psalm 119, verse 1. And then one more scripture. And you can go home and have popcorn. <laughs> Praise God. Make sure you feed on the righteous seed, though. Amen. Verse 1, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. How many of y'all know that the law of the Lord is the seed of the Lord? Amen. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who keep his seed, who seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments, and I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Blessed are the undefiled. And I'm going to close at Genesis 1. Personal garden. What's in your personal garden? Now, I want you to know that others would like to offer you seed out of their own garden. Be careful. Bad company corrupts good habits. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. When you really think about it, that's what Satan's kingdom did when they put on, when the, uh, about 200 of the fallen angels put on flesh, 
came in and went into the women and produced offspring. So what were they doing? They were producing another seed, a whole other race, a corruptible race. And that's what we're battling right now, offsprings of Nephilim. Verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In other words, his own seed. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be what? Fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields what? Seed. Which is on the face of the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Be careful what you eat. Amen, God. Because what you speak is what you eat. Amen. Praise God. What's in your garden? It's time for garden cleaning. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time to clean up our garden. You can't clean up anybody else's garden now. Amen. Only your own. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we thank you for the tools and revelations that we may clean up our own garden. And get rid of all corruptible weeds in there, Lord. We ask for your mercies and grace and for your continued help. Put a guard over our lips and tongue and our eyes and clean our garden out, Lord, that we may bear good fruit, righteous fruit, and produce righteous seed for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.